Mary Tamu's map is our study, and we're looking at Tamu. And we've done so far who, the Bible, the resurrection, where. Today we're going to pick up what as we study Tamu's at. So, an interesting study. How it has brought us to Easter and Esther and get our previous study on Easter and Esther in disguise. You might recognize Esther in two forms. The idol's got little eggs or boobs all over her chest. Or if you really like a good expensive cup of coffee, you might find Esther. In Uzi, or Dumuzi, it's D-U-M-U-Z-I-D, that's another name for Tamuz, was associated with fertility, Easter, egg, spring, love, chocolate, and vegetation, and the hot, dry summers of Mesopotamia were believed to be caused by Imunzai's yearly death. Now we talked about the resurrection and we saw, let's look at that word again, the dying and rising God. Now the Catholic Church almost daily, by weekly at least, proclaims to in their mass to kill Jesus over and over and over. Despite the fact is that the book of Hebrews says Jesus Christ sat down after he offered himself once. One salvation. So here's Tamuz in Umzi in a yearly death. He's dying over and over and over. Friend, the Catholic mass is not Jesus Christ of the Bible. It is Inunzai, Tamu, that dies quite frequently. Tamu's Inunzai is associated as an antichrist of Jesus. And he's celebrated about Easter, and he's found in the Catholic Church. My Jesus died once, not yearly or weekly. Assyrianologist, A-S-S-Y-R-I-O-L-O-G-I-S-T-S, -S -S. I've got a full page of all the documented people who know what they're doing, who get paid for what they're doing, archaeology. So here is an ologist, Jeremy Black and Anthony Green, describe the early history in Umzai cult as complex and bewildering. Assyrian ologists, people who know about Assyria, men to know, you know, you got a question, you run and look up Jer Jeremy Black, you run and look up Anthony Green. And Tamuz and Imuzai, how we have seen him resurrected, as we see him a dying God, we see him as an antichrist, we see him in Easter, we see him associated with Inanna, we see him associated with this star. And the people to know who probably don't know what the Bible says and maybe not know Jesus Christ, I don't know. And in their description and not mine, they say cult, C-U-L-T. Friend, when we get done with the study of Tammuz, you're going to find that the birthday of Tammuz is December 25th. And he is associated with it, with Easter. And the people to know, the worldly ones of, of education and scholarship, they're calling this an occult. Not the Bible preacher, a Baptist born again, who, who you know, screams and hollers people with the gospel and, and teaches. 
Imunzai had virtually no power outside of his distinct realm of responsibility. Well, there he loses the track of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I have power to take up my life. I have power to lay it down. Jesus has the power of judgment. Jesus, who is the word, has all power. So I'll take Jesus Christ to the Bible. Very few prayers are addressed to him. Are exempt. Exempt, excuse me. Almost all of them are sim simply, simply requests for him to provide more milk, more grain, more cattle. Well, see, there's your worldly Christian, there's your worldly unsaved person praying to God. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. That's what a kid does coming up to Christmas and his birthday. Give me a bike, give me a toy, give me the video game, give me this, give me that, give me this, give me that. That's what that's what kids do to Santa Claus. They go sit in his lap and give me, give me, give me. I mean, where Jesus says ask. James says you receive not because you ask not, but we don't pray to God, give me, give me, give me. We pray to God for thanksgiving. We pray to God not just for me, but for others. Milk. Oh, the Bible is the milk. A sole exception to this rule is a single Assyrian inscription in which a man requests Tammuz, or an immune's eye, that which he descends to the underworld, hell, their hell, their hell is the underworld. Like some Bible scholars would, would you know, uh, Shiloh. As he descends the underworld, he should take with him a troublesome ghost who has been haunting him. So some guy wrote that in the Syrian and, and they found it. He goes to the underworld. Tammuz goes to the underground. Now, my Jesus went to hell. But he went to hell once and deposited my sins and preached to the prisoners in hell cross that gulf that, that uh, Abraham spoke about and called out those that were on Abraham's bosom out. Now, we said that the Muzai's yearly death, and as he descends into the underworld, Tamu, what, does he go to hell every year? As frequent as the Catholics take their Jesus and kill their Jesus. Here we go with another one interesting thing and we're gonna and we're, we'll, we'll run into these over and over and over the custom of planting miniature gardens with fast growing plants such as lettuce and fennel which would then be placed out in the hot sun to sprout before withering in the heat So they would you know, grow lettuce, not to have, make a salad. I'd love to have a salad. They grow and die. We have a God here, small G-O-D. He dies every year. He's associated with, with vegetation. We're going to grow the plant up and then it's going to die. <coughs> and we'll get more into these plants. So I, I won't say much now. A well-attested custom in ancient Greece associated a festival with Adonai in honor of Adonis, the Greek version of Tammuz. And we're going to do Adonis, Lord willing, next week. So Tammuz is Adonis, Greek. He's also in Munzai, Mesopotamian, and, and Assyrian and all that. My, my Jesus has many names, but he has one name above all names. Name of Jesus Christ, Jehovah saves. He's the mighty prince. He's the prince of, of peace. He's the, the, the counselor, the wonderful counselor. He's the amen. He's the alpha and omega. 
But Jesus Christ doesn't go under the name of aliases. Some scholars have argued based on references in the Hebrew Bible. And we'll look at some of those references. That there's possibly this reference to the gardens, which we'll talk about again, is found in the scriptures. Maybe. And if it is, we are in the realm of Demuzai. We are in the realm of Tamuz. And you may have this going on in your own house. And not even know of this dying and rising God. See, you, you got to get history. You got to get the Bible to realize something you may be doing may be sin. And you may like it. For him to know it to do good and do it not to him in sin. Now, with all these studies I do, there are Christians who are going to decide, oh, I'm going to keep it because I like it. I'm going to keep it because my family, if it's a sin, I can't force you. I can only give you the fact. If it's a sin, and you continue in that sin and go about blind, Oh, I don't see it that way. Oh, maybe if I... Friend, it's going to be wood, hay, or stubble at the judgment seat of Christ. That this custom, the small garden, may have been a continu continuous ation going forth from an early oriental practice. And you've seen the Oriental Gardens with, with the sand and the dirt so scribed and the little, you know, the, the, the movie of the Karate Kid with the little bonsai tree in the pot and he goes into the bonsai business and that bonsai tree is worship. That bonsai tree from the Orient will evolve itself into miniature gardens of Tammuz and who we're studying about. Listen, there's nothing wrong. You got plants in your house and you water them and you make sure they get the light. You cut off the dead leaves and you get them fertilized. But when you go into the mass workings and the mass of doing what they do with bonsai trees and the amount of money they pay for them, When the cult, I didn't say that. I am quoting from the people. And I, I got a full page of the quote. When the cult of Tamu spread to Assyria in the second and first millennia, they say BC, uh, BC. I was just trying to think. The character of the god, small g o d seems to have changed from that of the pastoral to that of an agricultural deity. He's gone from sheep and shepherds to plants. He's gone out in the fields to the greenhouse. Do you know who was the agricultural, I can't say that word, the greenhouse man of the Bible? Come on, you do, Cain. The text suggests that in Assyria, and later among the Sabaeans, Tammuz was basically viewed as a power in grain, dying when the grain was milled. So together again, there's that dying God. When the grain is milled, they do that every year. Now, Jesus said, a kernel of wheat fall to the ground, except to die, it shall not, uh, shall not live. Do you see how the devil is taking the Bible and he's transformed it, 2 Corinthians 11, unto his own personal small g-o-d-s and small g-o-d-e-s-s, goddesses? You've seen how Satan has taken Jesus Christ and Antichrist him unto his gods? How he's changed what the Bible said into his own blink beans. 
Evidently, a variety of the original independent fertility gods seem to have become to be identified with Temu. Fertility, remember, that's Easter. That's Estar. Temus of cattle herders. You know cattle. You know Aaron made the golden calf. Cowboys and Indians. You know that the chicken who the, 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 the cow that can't smell chicken does eat more chicken. You know about cattle. You know about the bull. You know the computer that has the symbol of the black and white. Whose main distinction from Temu is the shepherd. Remember, he's also associated as a shepherd. Jesus is the shepherd of the sheep. This is the Antichrist of the sheep. He's a shepherd. He dies. He comes back to life. He dies. He comes back to life. He dies. Come back to life. He's associated with love and fertility. He's associated with greenery and and plants and little gardens and resurrections. That his mother was a goddess, Nussen, N I N S U N, Lady Wild Cow. I didn't say it, that's what it is. Cow is a great realm of worship. Hamburger. Steak restaurants. India worships the cow. Now the fact is, if, if, a, if a man in India finds a cow peeing, they will stick their head in the urine of the cow as a form of, of whatever they do for their worship. Cows were worshipped in Egypt. Cows were worshipped in Babylon. You got the holy cow. I remember growing up, my family involved in the Yankees baseball, and they had one great sports guy. He'd die. My man, he would, oh, holy cow, hit the ball, holy cow. He caught the ball, holy cow. And he was known for that. And that he himself was in image or imagined as a cattle herder, a cowboy. And you got the cowboy movies where, you know, these cowboys are fighting those cowboys. Where did that come from? That came with Abraham and Lot. Abraham and Lot were the two first cowboys to be found in the Bible that, that fought with each other over the ranch. And things were not okay. May have been the original aspect of the God, small g o d. The atrical, adri yeah, I can't say this word. Atrical, the, the plant form of Temu in the north, where he was identified with the grain, may also have been originally independent developed of the God, small g o d, from his role as the power and vegetation of spring. That's our. The buds come out, the seedlings are planted. A clear fusion, though very early, was the merger of Tamus and Uruk, U R U K, with, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it, A M A U S H U M G A L A N A. One of the great source of the date cluster, the date as a fruit, i.e., the power of fertility in the date farm. So now we got him a reference to a tree, like Jesus Christ is reference to a tree. Here the date palm and fertility, fertility. Fertility is when life comes alive. Jesus Christ is the author of eternal life. Not by sexual relations, but by faith and belief. Tammuz was also called a healer as a profession. 
and regarded as a savior. But as Langdon, L-A-N-G-D-O-N, note, that's another man who knows what he's talking about. And he's got Lang, L-A-N-G, period, T-I, comma, 34. So the man that says we're doing this tame who's I call Antichrist, is called a healer. Didn't Jesus heal? And he's regarded as a savior. And friend, let me tell you ahead of time. Tammuz was born December 25th. My opinion, you better drop Christmas. But we haven't got there yet. He's associated with Easter. I hope through Tammuz so far, and I hope when you get to study and look at the study of Easter in disguise, I hope you've already dropped an Easter. I hope you know that Easter is a sin and that you don't continue because him that knows to do is good and doeth it not to him is a sin. You know what I mean? Tamuz healed medically. But as Langdon reminds us, the man who knows doing, quote, I quote, every deity, male or female, possessed this power, end of quote. Now we already read that in, in uh, Assyria, Tamuz had no power. Now in this aspect, Tamuz has got power. He's a superhero. Better watch out for that superhero. I'm trying to think of a name. Uh, Marvel. Better watch out for the Marvel. Now our Jesus Christ, my Savior, is healed by the power of God. Remember, he had no power. Jesus had the power to heal. Jesus had the power to make the blind see. Jesus had the power for the deaf to hear. Jesus had the power for the lame to walk and hold and talk. Jesus had the power over death to resurrect. Tamuz healed medically. But as Langdon reminds us again, quote, every deity, male and female, possessed this power. So do the charismatics. Everybody's got the power of healing in tongues. And charismatics are in the realm of the quote, um, quote of the uh, cult. So it's remarked by Landon. So, Land, so Tamuz is nothing special, or, unex, or unexpected for a god, true or false, for that matter. So Langdon's like, okay, Tamuz could heal with medicine. Oh, oh okay. And yet when Jesus healed, people believed on him and people believed on the Father. And it got the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes angry, especially when he did it on the Sabbath. Now, I didn't write this again. Tamu saved, but not from sin. I didn't write that. And it's already recorded that they see him as a savior, but he can't save from soul from sin. He's saved from starvation and physical death. But he couldn't save your soul from hell. He has the power of physical death. That means he could keep you alive for a little longer. Well, friend, uh, right behind me is a hospital. There is the power of, 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 of machines and uh, CPR and doctors and nurses can use their talents to prevent a person from, from dying from a cold, they call it. I know somebody today that went into a cold and they brought him, brought him back to life. They're not gods. And Langdon already made with this power that Tamuz has. <sighs> He's a savior, but he can't save you from your soul, from sin. He was never looked upon as one to rescue from eternal damnation. I did not write that. 
That was too way out for him. I didn't write that. So under your God of Tammuz, he can have you live longer. But when you eventually die, which he could not stop, without faith and belief in Almighty God, Jehovah, and the blood of Jesus Christ, today, guess what, my friend? You died and go to hell. It's that plain and simple. Well, that's what? Next week, Lord willing, Adonis, another alias name of Tammuz.